Hey, this is Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. In this video, we're going to be covering the serverless plugin warm-up. Uh, so basically what this function does, or what this, <clears throat> what this plugin does, is it allows you to keep your lambdas warm. Uh, it says during winter, really. Um, what happens is that your lambda functions are run inside of a container, and the container runs your runtime. So like, let's say you chose like Node.js or Python. Um, the container is running something that can basically run Node.js or Python code. And when it actually gets invoked for the first time, when it actually gets run for the first time, it spins up a container, puts your code onto that container, but the container doesn't stay up. Your Lambda code is temporary, right? So the environment that it's running on, as AWS points out in their documentation, um, is temporary, it's ephemeral. So what you can do is you can use a uh, custom solution where you're, you're basically triggering that function to run once every five minutes yourself, or you can use a plugin like serverless plugin warmup, which will kind of do the same thing for you. So in this video, we're gonna show how to use this plugin uh, to start uh, keeping our Lambda function uh, running. And so what that means is that um, once it takes that code and puts it onto the Docker container, um, after a certain period of time, uh, it's somewhat unknown. You can read articles about people who've tried to figure it out. Um, but it's somewhat between like 5 to like 13 minutes uh, on average that it'll stay up. Sometimes it'll stay up for an hour, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, but the kind of, I guess, like rule of thumb is uh, 5 minutes is probably a good point. Um, at the very bottom, you may think, okay, if I'm invoking this function once every 5 minutes, what is the cost going to look like? There's actually a cost breakdown here that they have. Um, so running warm-up uh, 8,640 times a month. Uh, is 18 cents, uh, 10 functions. So if you're running this times 10, that would be $14 a month and total like 14.50. So this doesn't include the free tier. So if you actually had free tier still, um, which you get for the first 12 months of AWS access, then this price would probably be free. So you can kind of want, you can keep 10 Lambda functions making very fast responses um, without or by using this plugin. So um, it's kind of a topic that you may want to research as well. It's called um, Lambda Cold Start. So this is kind of what you would look at to get an idea for cold starts and what's, what's actually the problem. So um, go ahead and dive into any of those if you want more information. But right now, let's go ahead and start writing some code. So um, real quick, what we're going to do is make another project like we've done in previous videos. So if you want to switch over to the terminal, we're going to go ahead and run uh, serverless create dash dash template AWS Node.js, and then we'll give it a path that's equal to serverless plugin warmup. So this is going to create our project and give it all the defaults. Okay, now I'm going to CD into serverless plugin warmup. Go ahead and clear the terminal. Now let's go ahead and open this up in Atom. And so what we're going to do is do a brief breakdown of the files that are in here. We're going to take out some comments from the serverless.yaml file, and then we'll jump in. So let's go ahead and take out these comments. Now this serverless.yaml file, this is what we normally see. Um, this is here every single time. Um, so you have different sections uh, that define your infrastructure uh, written inside of one file. This is all your databases. This is your Lambda functions, your API endpoints. Um, basically, your, uh, it could even be your servers. Basically, anything that your, your, your application needs to run goes inside of this file. And what happens is that serverless turns it into a CloudFormation stack, and then CloudFormation is what AWS understands. AWS then takes that, looks through the file, says, okay, you need a database, I'll create a database. You want the database to be called my database, so it'll, cre it'll create the database and call it my database. You want that database connected to a Lambda function or something like that, it'll connect it. You need permissions, it'll create the permissions for it. Um, of course, you have to write most of this yourself, but the idea is you write it once and you can run it uh, you know, uh, basically everywhere. So uh, what that means is uh, AWS is spread all across the, the globe. And by creating these, uh, basically these script files that define your architecture and define your infrastructure uh, as code, you can basically just run one command and you can create that same application you know, 12 different times all around the world 
um, with just one command, right? And by just changing one value, maybe uh, the region uh, where you want it to deploy. So uh, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So basically we have the serverless.yaml file. It has our service as normal. We have our provider section. This is where we define our runtime. Uh, we're using Node.js 6. We have our functions. It comes with a boilerplate function called handler hello. So let's go ahead and jump into the handler function and take a look at this. So as you can see here, we have our hello function. It's going to return a response that has a status code of 200 and a body that says go serverless. So what we're going to do is jump over to the documentation and we're going to start uh, moving through it. So one thing that we need to do is we need to install the plugin via NPM. So go ahead and copy this and we are going to open up the terminal and we're going to run npm init-y. This is going to create uh, our project as an npm project. And then we're going to install the plugin. Now that the plugin is installed, we're going to switch back over. We're going to add a section to our serverless.yaml file called plugins. And we're going to add the serverless plugin warmup into that. Cool, we have that. So now it says that we need to add a warm-up property to all functions we want to be warm. So for us, we want to keep the hello function warm. So we're going to add warm-up true to hello. And so now we have handler, and this points to our function code inside of handler.js. And we have warm-up to true, and this is required by the plugin. So you can also do for a specific stage, you can say just for production, or you can say for several stages, production and staging. Um, it says that warmup requires some permissions to be able to invoke the functions. So by default, AWS makes everything private. So to give access, you have to write IAM permissions. Uh, usually these are in the form of policies or roles. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use uh, IAM role statements. So you can write your own custom role down here. This is very long. Um, this is very like AWS like, um, structure but serverless gives us a an option to basically jump through this faster let's go ahead and open up their documentation here at the uh, serverless.com framework uh, docs providers and then functions permissions and what we can see is there's this section called iam role statements so it gives permissions for all your functions uh, in this one statement so this is good for kind of our purpose where we're just trying to test something very quickly if you actually wanted to release this to production, what you would do is find another plugin uh, that allows you to do IAM permissions for specific functions uh, and use that. And that will basically scope every function to have very uh, granular uh, access and make sure that if you're giving database read access to one Lambda function, it doesn't give it to the other by default because um, you don't want that, right? Let's go ahead and copy this. We can go up underneath the provider section under runtime and we can add a IAM role statements down here. Cool, so we're going to allow, um, these are kind of the boilerplate from uh, serverless's documentation. Let's switch it back over to the plugin and see, uh, let's, so they're giving lambda invoke function as the action. So as you can see here, we have effect, which is allow. So it's saying allow these functions to do something. And then it has an action. What do you want these functions to do? Um, so, this, is, this could be a DynamoDB query. So if this is for a database permission. Um, for our purpose, we're not using databases. So we're going to say Lambda invoke function. So if we copy this and we add it, you can see that it says allow the action of invoking our Lambda function. And it says resource. So what do you want to give access to invoke your function, right? So where is this coming from? And to do the resource, we can add this section down here, which says function join. The so function join is something that CloudFormation uses to basically, um, it allows it to handle um, combining these things together. So every single little tick mark that you see, that's actually a line that's going to be concatenated together. And so all this looks like jumbled code, right? But when it actually runs, it's going to turn it into one single string. And that string is going to equal our Lambda uh, or our um, that, a specific ARN. So what we can do here is now that we have this function join, 
Uh, it looks like we have ARN, AWS, Lambda, region, account ID, function, self-service, option stage, provider option stage. Um, so what this is doing is it's looking to see what our stage is. Um, so basically we don't have a stage defined up here. So what we can do is add a stage that says dev. And now what this is gonna do is look in dev. Um, Self-service, that's going to refer to this here. So it's gonna say function, serverless, plugin, warmup one. And then it's gonna have a dash mark and it's going to say stage, that'll be dev, so dash dev. And then it's gonna have a dash star. So meaning it can invoke um, any function or any version of our function. Cool, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and see what else we need to do. So if you're using pre-warm, the deployment user also needs a similar policy. Okay, so we're not using that, I don't think. Now add an early callback uh, when the event source is serverless plugin warmup. Okay, so this is our boilerplate code that we have in handler.js right here. So what we're going to do is add a section which is basically going to handle when the invocation comes from the serverless plugin versus when an invocation comes uh, in our real code. So this won't add any extra runtime, but what it's basically gonna do is the first thing that it checks when an event comes in is it checks the source of the event, checks to see if it's serverless plugin warmup. If it is, it says Lambda is warm and it returns and that ends the invocation. So it won't run anything else. Awesome, okay. So now it says that we can run SLS deploy and we can actually see this. So let's go ahead and run SLS deploy and we don't need to run stage and we can just deploy dash V. So if you don't have um, the serverless CLI set up or an AWS account, please go check out our other videos. We cover this on the YouTube channel and also on serverlessguru.com. So while this is deploying, I'll go switch over there so you can see. If you go to serverlessguru.com and you go to all courses, if you look at the serverless introduction and you scroll down the page, this first serverless project, this will get you set up so you can do all of these plugin courses that I talk about. Um, there is some prerequisites required for this video. And so please check out first serverless project to get those prerequisites knocked out. That'll be setting up your CLI, setting up your AWS accounts, connecting all that stuff together so you can do deployments. Um, I'm gonna assume you have that. Um, and so we're just gonna move forward from here. Uh, if you don't, feel free to pause, go over to that video or go over to the YouTube channel, Serverless Guru, and watch that first serverless project. Uh, and that'll, that'll show you how to do everything required to run the code that we're running right now. I think it's only like a 10 minute video as well, so it's, it's pretty quick. All right, so everything is deploying right now. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and check the dot serverless file and see what was actually created. So it looks like we have, here's our CloudFormation stack and our template. I'm really curious to see if it created its own function. Yeah, so basically what this plugin does is it creates a warmup Lambda function, which has permission to invoke your main function or all the functions that you need. So that's basically what this plugin is doing is actually creating another function for you. You just don't see it. And so what you would do if you wrote your own custom solution is you would do the exact same thing, but you would have to create that Lambda, write the code to invoke your function, um, this kind of handles it for you. Uh, so it kind of streamlines, streamlines the process. I think based on my own opinion, uh, and I haven't seen uh, if this works or not, um, I would probably still use a custom solution to do the warm up, just because I like having a little bit more access to um, some details. Uh, obviously, it says in the documentation that you can do things like um, specify a time, timeout, all these different things, uh, which is awesome. Um, but I do like being able to just have uh, more access to uh, all the config underneath it. Um, so yeah, cool. All right, it deployed. Let's switch over to the AWS console. Uh, if you don't have this already open, you're gonna need to log in and then go to CloudFormation. So you can type in CloudFormation here. Go ahead and click that. 
CloudFormation is AWS's way of deploying resources on AWS in a scriptable and repeatable way. So if you switch over to North Virginia, that is US East 1, by default, because we did not set a region inside of our serverless.yaml file, this is being deployed inside of US East 1 or North Virginia. So we can see the stack here. We can see that it was updated complete. So let's go ahead and search for Lambda. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to Lambda. This is AWS's cloud functions. And we're going to see that we have a warm-up plugin. So let's go ahead and open this up and maybe we can look at the code that the plugin is creating. So this is a code that is invoking our function. So we can see that they create a timestamp time up here. They're doing some imports. Uh, they have the region, US East 1. Um, they have the function names up here. Um, they're passing it in as, uh, which is funny because you can only do environment variables as strings. They're actually specifying the function name and then they use a, use a comma and then the next function name and then comma and then inside of their function and they're breaking it with a, um, a dot split. It's funny that I'm, because I wrote my own custom solution, I, I wrote this the exact same way, um, which is kind of funny <laughs> to see that people are writing it the same way. Um, Cool, and now, now that we have an idea for what the plugin is doing, let's switch over to the hello function. So here's our hello function. This is what we wrote inside of handler.js. So now let's go ahead and go to, um, let's actually run this first. So let's give it a test event and we're going to test the plugin. So it said in the plugin that if we give it a source of uh, the actual serverless plugin name, uh, there it is, serverless plugin warmup. Take that and then see here. Okay, so I think it said that if you do this, then it should send back. Yeah, so if we look here, when this function runs, it gets event. And it says if the event.source is equal to serverless plugin warmup, then it'll return a callback that says lambda is warm. So if we create a test event that has an event.source equal to that value, then when we run this, we should be able to see, yeah, Lambda is warm. So that's different because let's create another test event. Let's call this a real event. Um, so we'll say that the real event, real event, and instead of having something here, let's say that this was coming through with um, some details about a user. Um, so let's say that this is name and age, and we'll say 23. And when we run this one, it shouldn't say lambda is warm, it should run it as normal. So as you can see, status code, it sends back our input was name, Ryan, age 23. Um, so this is cool. Now let's go ahead and click this logs right here. So CloudWatch is what uh, you can basically use to monitor all your architecture and your systems on AWS. So CloudWatch allows us to look and see what's happening with our function. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Yeah, so it looks like we've only had one set of invocations. The first one said Lambda is warm. There was another one that said Lambda is warm as well. Um, see, so are there any new ones? So far, no. But as we can see here, um, this first invocation that happened, which was logged out to uh, the CloudWatch console, that didn't actually come from us. So uh, basically, we ran the function and Basically, we ran our function, that's printed here, and then we ran our function again, passing in a real event. But this invocation at the very bottom, that didn't actually come from us, that came from the plugin itself. So as it says, by default, every five minutes, it's going to run your function. Um, so let's see if we can find that. Sorry. Five. Yeah, so by default, every five minutes, it's going to invoke the function. So we can see that there is that we deployed the function and we were able to see the invocation happen in CloudWatch. Um, what you could do if you wanted to is you could set this interval to even smaller. Um, so you could say basically one minute, you could say <clears throat> 10 minutes, depending on what you want. And there's also, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, there's also more features down here. So. There's options with this plugin for doing things like folder name, uh, memory size, uh, name role, the schedule that you want. 
uh, timeout. So if we wanted to add more functionality to this, um, we could actually say that we want the name of the function for the warm-up function to be this. We could say we want the function to use this role. We could say we want the schedule to run uh, every um, one minute. And we could give it a custom timeout. So we could say um, timeout after one, you know, five seconds, uh, 10 seconds. We could say that <clears throat> we want the um, tags. This is for cost allocation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the actual event that's coming in, which we already checked. And other than that, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So um, this is deploying the function. This is giving us everything that we need to run it. Um, inside of this CloudFormation stack, by default, is actually creating uh, our Lambda function. So we can click inside of the stack that was created and see these are the resources. So we have our Hello Lambda. And we have the warm-up Lambda. Inside the Lambda console, we were able to test it. Uh, we can actually jump into the plugin code or into our own code. Um, and yeah, it's really, um, yes, it seems pretty simple to set this up. Um, normally what you would do just to give you an overview is you would still have to create two functions. So you would have functions hello here, and then you have to create a second function here um, called like, you know, pretty much what they called it, warm up. And then you would have another function or another file which is called something like handler, call it like warmup, and then call it like warmup.handler. And then you would create a file inside of here called warmup.js, same as handler.js. You would copy this code, paste it here, call this handler, and remove all this here. And then basically inside of this function, instead of making a response, its whole job would just be to uh, do like one thing, which is invoke all lambdas that you want, right? So that's what we can see inside of their function code and the Lambda console. So if we click in there again and we scroll down to the function code, you can see that it's, it's grabbing the function names. So this is coming directly from the serverless.yaml file. This is happening behind the scenes with the plugin. But when it creates that Lambda function, it's actually passing an environment variable um, that has the function name. And so that would be this here. And then it's splitting it, creating an array, and then it's going through and invoking it. Uh, it's invoking once for every function that you, you basically attach to this. So yeah, I think that wraps it up. Um, I know this is a lot of information. Um, it's a very simple plugin. All it does is invoke your function on a timer, but I wanted to kind of give an overview of the stuff outside of just this plugin and the concept behind why you even have to warm a function to begin with, right? Like why do you have to warm a Lambda function or why do you have to warm a, or a cloud function in general? Um, and this is probably, this, this is pretty much how it works on every cloud provider as well. Uh, I'm currently learning Google Cloud and they also have cloud functions, but no matter what you do, um, they have to run it on a container. And so when you run it on a container, um, it's not sitting there like it normally would on a server. It has to be like downloaded and then it has to basically be installed and then it has to run from there. And that's why you get cold starts because the first time that it runs, um, it didn't exist before that. And then it gets, basically someone says like, hey, I need to run your Lambda function. And then what happens in the background, AWS grabs a Docker container, it downloads your code from wherever you have it, it then installs your code, and then it accepts that request, handles that request, and then sends it back. Um, yeah, and that can be obviously an issue. So, all right, well, this um, may have been kind of a long rant um, about uh, warmups, but it's actually something that I've had to do multiple times at different companies. Uh, and it's something that everyone runs into. So you'll definitely run into this when you start working with AWS Lambda and with uh, serverless architecture and serverless development on AWS. So thanks for watching. This was Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. I will see you next time.